Heading to the Bahamas for your next vacation? Well, pack your sunscreen and your appetite because this week I'm giving you 10 top foods that you need to try on your next trip to the Bahamas. Let's go. Hello kitties and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rogan, better known as this Bahamian Yeah, I'm your ultimate guide to the Bahamas and Washington DC. So Bahamian food is some of the most delicious and creative foods you'll ever find not only in the Caribbean, but the world. Still, a lot of people don't know about the many delicacies we offer. Not only are we creative when it comes to making food, but it's damn yummy. It's delicious, it's flavorful, it's packed with spice, it's packed with... <sighs> Let me bring it down a little bit. Oh, by the way, don't let any of the exotic foods on this list scare you because I know I'm going to say a few of them and you're going to be like, what? Precious lime of God. This is in no particular order, just some of my favorites that I grew up with and still love to this day. So let's get into it. <laughs> so the first food on this list is sheep tongue sauce. Oh, no, don't, don't click off my video just yet. I know y'all like sheep tongue. Oh, let me find somebody else on YouTube to watch. But this delicacy is amazing in the Bahamas. It's a typical Bahamian breakfast, but you can enjoy it at any time of the day. And if you see S-O-U-S-E, it's it like rhymes with house, it's sauce. And it's really like a clear broth that is really spicy. Like, especially, it depends on who's preparing it, but this, the, the broth itself can be really, really pepper, really, really hot, really peppery. Um, and it's a sheep tongue, you have onions in it, you have celery, you have bay leaf, you have um, allspice, of course, your salt, your pepper, and then people get creative and add whatever they want. Um, do not put tomatoes in sauce. It's just really delicious. It's like, again, like the perfect Bahamian breakfast. Um, I know like when people go uh, to Junkanoo, and Junkanoo ends like early in the morning and you're hungry and you need something solid. That's what Bahamian people would say. Like you need something that's kind of heavy. You ain't just want to go like, go, go like a fast food joint. You want something heavy in your belly. You go get you some sauce and there are different types of sauce sheep tongue happens to be my favorite chicken sauce is like my second favorite and then they have pig feet sauce i don't really like the pig feet sauce because it's just too fatty for me but let me tell you something you can't get between some behemoths in their pig feet sauce so definitely try any one of the sauces but my personal favorite the sheep tongue sauce and what i love about it is it's so it's so tender like especially when they, they prepare it right it's so tender it makes your mouth salivate because of the lime juice that's in it and it's, it, when you look at it, you go, I don't know if I want to eat that. Like, especially if you're not accustomed to it, like you'll be in sheep heaven, like for real. It tastes so good. It just melts on your tongue, probably because it's made of a tongue. I don't know. Anyway, you're going to love it. So make sure you try the sheep tongue sauce when you go to the Bahamas. So the next food on this list is another one of my personal favorites. It's cracked conch. Um, it's actually cracked conch, but it seems like the Bahamians have a problem with ED. So we just drop like the ED from cracked conch and we just say cracked conch. And conch is a mollusk and it almost has the consistency of like squid. Like, you know, like if you have like calamari in a restaurant, um, except it's not as rubbery. I find calamari to be very chewy. Like we chewing on it like a rubber band for, for quite some time just to, just to break it down. But conch is way more uh, tender than that. And I love it because they season it, they put in like a flour egg wash and they deep fry it and it comes out with this nice fluffy golden white, not golden white, but golden color. And it just tastes really, really good. And conch is very versatile in the Bahamas. Like you'll find a lot of conch dishes in some like this list, but like cracked conch, you could have it with French fries and ketchup and hot sauce. And some Bahamians put like mayo and onions on it. Um, and that's one way to have it. And sometimes people like to have it as a, like a full meal and they'll have it with like peas and rice, um, potato salad, like plantain, something like that, or coleslaw. So you can have it like, like as a snack, like a conch snack with just the fries and then like a roll, or you can have it as a full meal. But however you choose to have it, it's like really delicious. And if you go to any Bahamian restaurant, like authentically Bahamian, authentic Bahamian restaurant, they're definitely gonna have crack conch on the menu. I think you should try it. Um, no one crack conch is made the same. I, I would definitely suggest people go to the fish fry um, and, and go to one of the restaurants and they're gonna have, you know, the conch prepared really well. I don't think I've had bad crack conch, to be honest with you. I think that's the one thing that's pretty consistent. So definitely try the crack conch when you go to the Bahamas. Remember how I said Bahamas don't like the ED on the end of words? So the next food on my list is stew fish and Johnny cake. So it's really stewed fish and Johnny cake, but it's stewed fish and Johnny cake. And we are big on seafood in the Bahamas. We love our fish and we love it fresh. 
Um, a lot of people will have grouper, that's really popular in the Bahamas, and snapper, like that red snapper. Um, so when you have a stewed fish, you could use any, or stewed fish, you could have any one of those. And the whole fish is used. Like we don't throw away the head or anything like that. Like you'll see the whole fish, the whole fish inside your plate. And um, it's almost like a roux. Like they take like the, the flour and they season it and they put like onions and, and you know, like your celery or whatever. And you, you kind of like, you, you, you season it and you, you brown it in the pot with like oil. And then of course you, you would have already fried your fish and that sort of thing. And you mix it up into that um, into that roux. It's it's really really delicious. It's more intense than that. It has more ingredients. So I'm just trying to give you the basic understanding of stewed fish, and um, it's perfect for breakfast. But some people have it at nighttime if that's what they're feeling. And a lot of times when they have it for breakfast, they serve it alongside um, uh, Johnny Cake or grits. Like yellow grits is big in the Bahamas. You can have it with white grits, but a lot of people ask for yellow grits. And Johnny Cake is another one of my favorites. Like it's a perfect staple to go with sauce as well. Any one of those sauces and definitely stewed fish. And um, what I like about Johnny Cake, and for those of you who don't know what Johnny Cake is, it's like, how do I describe it? It's like if pound cake and cornbread had a baby, it would be Johnny Cake. That's what Johnny Cake is to me. Um, and it's white and it's buttery. It's just, it's really soft. It's, it's not like bread, okay? It's just just have it when you go there when you go there and by the way like I greedy so I will have my stew fish and I'll have the grits and I'll have the Johnny cake and I suggest you do the same thing too when you go wherever you go especially if you go like in the in the other islands outside of Nassau like that's when they really know how to cook the Hamans in the, in the family islands and other islands they know how to cook they, they go from scratch they they off the chain Uh, my family from Andros, that's the largest island in the Bahamas, and so we big on crab, like Andros is known for crab, so we do a lot of crab dishes, and um, one of my favorites is crab and rice. Um, peas and rice I love, but definitely crab and rice because crab um, offers a unique flavor that I've never tasted, um, and the kinds of crab that we use are land crabs, so don't think like the crabs that you see like like in the restaurants in the states or anything like that these are land crabs and it's a process for cleaning out the crab before you cook it like you don't just grab the crab and then put it in a pot and cook you know what i mean like you have to because they eat all kind of stuff so you want to you want to make sure like you don't got to go through all this because you aren't cooking it so i ain't got to go through the full details but anyway when you go to the restaurant order crab and rice it's very tasty it's just beautiful on the plate um it kind of want to wants to look a little like i shouldn't say this but this is the, this is the closest thing i can think of like a jambalaya um, but it's not jambalaya and it's not like it doesn't have a wet consistency. It's very it just is like normal rice But but you know, it has like the crab flavor in it and it is delicious So um, you can't get it on the menu at all seasons like it's very seasonal But the summertime especially like around August like June July August. Yeah, that's when crabs crawl in That's when the crabs I'm crawling. So you definitely want to go into the restaurant and get crab and rice um, if you could find a Bahamian friend like make a behemoth friend, but make sure they know how to cook. Don't just go get no behemoth friend. They say, yeah, I can make crab and rice. And then you have this crab and rice. You're like, this is what she talking about? Because they ain't know how to make no crab and rice. So make sure you go to a nice restaurant or find you a, a you, you'll know who look like they know how to cook. You know how some people just know, like they look like they know how to cook? You will find them. They get you some crab and rice. Kong salad. This is one of my favorite dishes. When you have behemoths talking about they want salad, they ain't talking about with no lettuce and no tomatoes and no carrots and none. They talking about this. They want a salad. They want a conch salad. And I love that um, it's prepared freshly in front of you. Like you'll see the guys or whoever whoever's out there cook, um, making it. They will they will chop up the 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 conch and they'll chop up all the vegetables and everything that goes in it. And it's usually served in like a styrofoam um, bowl and put in a bag and you need that bag because the juices from like the orange and from like the the lime it's just it's so juicy it's just gonna run over but that's like my favorite thing to, i don't know i sound so tacky but i like to like like take the baggie when it comes in and like drink drink that's what i like to do i like to drink you know but if you go into a restaurant and you put it in no baggie or nothing like that unless you go to like a fast food restaurant but um, I love conch salad. It's like a ceviche. That's the best way I could describe it for those of you who don't know. It's like onions, tomatoes. Um, what all I got? Onions, tomatoes. What else I got? Jesus, I forget all, all the ingredients in conch salad. Anyway, they have a bunch of different vegetables. Green peppers. People just put green peppers. Um, 
and I just love the way it looks. It's just visually very appealing and it's very tasty and it's spicy because we use a lot of gold pepper. Um, gold pepper is like habaneros and you might see them cutting it up. You'd be like, oh yeah, put more. Let me tell you something. Y'all be careful with that because that gold pepper don't play. So, you know, just, just kind of, you know, watch yourself. Now in the Bahamas, we, we like in the past, I don't know, maybe 10 years, they've been doing like tropical salads where they'll add like fruits. And some people like that, but I'm very traditional. I'm a traditionalist uh, person when it comes to my Kung salad. I like it the old school way. You know, the fruit, the, 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 the tropical one with the fruits, they, you know, they look good. They're very visually appealing. And I know a lot of people who love them, but I like, I like my old school. I like my old school Kung salad. And you can find Kung salad anywhere. And even in the hotels. Um, I have not had it in the hotels. And I don't know that I would recommend it unless you have like, the conch stalls and that sort of thing that we're at like the fish fry um having a location in the hotels and i think they do have some like that and if that if that's the case then go for it but you know like a lot of times hotels tend to water down things so just just go where the locals go and go to the fish fry next on the list guava duck this is my absolute favorite dessert of all time and i'm a girl who loves creme brulee i love my ice cream my butter pecan my pistachio nut ice cream let me tell you something Ain't nothing seeing guava duff in the Bahamas. How do I describe guava duff? On the appearance side, it looks like a pinwheel cake. You know, like how they roll the cake. Um, it has that appearance and it has guava at the center and it's made from flour. So it has a, it's like a thick, chewy, doughy kind of consistency. And I love that. But the star of the show, the star of the show is the, oh my God, just thinking about this is getting me worked up. It's like a guava rum butter sauce that they pour on top of the guava duff. If you ate the guava duff by itself, you'd be like, this this is kind of dry. It's like this don't have no you know like no no flavor. You'll taste the guava in the center, but that, that's not what it is. You have to have that as the base. That's the base, and then you have to have that beautiful creamy frothy rum butter guava sauce on top. That's what it set it off. And like once that sits in, like it seeps into the crevices of the guava duff, you lose your damn mind. You lose your damn mind. You know, it's a shame. I've never made guava duff in my life. I've made a lot of Bahamian food, but I've never made guava duff. And it's a process now. This ain't no, you don't make this overnight. But I need to just go ahead and do this because I got to be able to pass these recipes down. You know, when I have my children and things like that. So I got to, I got to learn how to make guava duff. I gotta learn how to make this guava duff, but please, um, not a lot of restaurants carry it year round. I don't know why this ain't like a regular staple. Oh, probably because the guavas are seasonal. That's probably why. It's just like the crabs. Um, but I, and there are some restaurants that will use like the guavas in the can. I ain't too like them too tough. Like I like it when it, I like it when it, um, like when when you have the real guava. Like you could taste like they they pick the guava from the tree. And they chop it up and all that stuff and like they make it authentically like that's the real bahamian way that's the way i grew up eating guava duff delicious you will eat that if you have it done the right way you'll eat that and you'll be like i i gotta carry this some, come, i have to carry some of this back home that's how you'll be like i have to carry some of this back home because it's that delicious get you some guava duff favorite pastry of all time favorite dessert of all time tuna fish Tuna fish and grits, hey, hey, tuna fish, tuna fish and grits, hey, hey. You be like tuna fish and grits. We used to eat a lot of like seafood and stuff for breakfast in the Bahamas. But tuna fish and grits is a staple in the Bahamas, okay? Um, we don't make our tuna, like I, I've seen people making tuna, like, I mean, Americans just make their tuna their way. But ours is like, you gotta have your, your, your pepper. Some people use the goat pepper. Some people use the bird pepper. Um, and mayonnaise and lime juice. I know you like lime juice. Gotta set it right off. Onions, um, celery, your green pepper. That tastes so damn good. And it's good for like tuna sandwiches, but, but Bahamians traditionally will eat it alongside some white grits or some yellow grits. And you really want, you like if you want to be fancy, then you cut up your pear. Like it's called, it's avocados, but we call it pear in the Bahamas. You you slice your pear, you slice your pear and you put that on the side of your food. Look here, you can't talk to me. Like that's the typical traditional Bahamian breakfast. Like one of them. So delicious, so savory. The, the tuna is like so savory. And then it's like right next to nice buttery grits. It's just perfect. Gotta have some tuna fish and grits when you go to the Bahamas. 
remember earlier when I told you guys that like my family's from Andres, okay, and we big on crab, so we eat a lot of crab, and one of my favorites is crab and dough. Now, crab and dough requires you to get your hands dirty. If you find a restaurant that that, that makes, and there are restaurants that make it, and a lot, but you have restaurants that give you some crab and dough. Um, the dough is placed right on top of the crab, like that's how it's steamed inside of the, um, the pot and that's how they'll give you your crab and dough they might cut up the, the dough and put it on the side with the crab but here are some things you need to know you're getting like the whole crab right so you're gonna have to break open the back so your hands are gonna get dirty so this is don't go on no date trying to act cute unless you get a date who's a real one you know it'll be like yeah let's get our hands dirty because you know you go to the bottom let's get your hands dirty you have to crack open that crab and then you're gonna see all that yummy fat now let me warn you about this fact to me this is one of these exotic dishes that a lot of people be like, I know if I too feel in that, but it's, I don't know. It could be an acquired taste, but it just tastes so good. And when you take your, 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 your dough, you, you dip that, you scoop out that, that crab fat and you eat that and the crab fat is, is dark. Oh my God, it tastes so good. Now here's the warning. Do not, <laughs> do not drink water after eating that crab fat. You will taste the most bitter, I mean, it's the most bitter aftertaste ever. You'd be like, oh my God, this tastes horrible. But then like the Heymans are used to it because you know like if you're gonna eat the crab, that's what's gonna come with it. It's like, you taste the good, you gotta take the bitter. <laughs> but I love crab and dough. Crab and dough is like one of my absolute favorites. It's like one of my childhood favorites. And I think that you guys have really enjoyed it. It's like I said, like get a, a bunch of people, go to a restaurant and say, we, we want a crab and dough and try it. <laughs> Whenever I think about this next dish, I think about my mother because she makes the best pea soup and dumplings on the planet. Pea soup and dumplings. I love it. It's a wonderful soup that I've enjoyed since I was a kid. And my mother knows just how to make it for me. Like some people like pea soup and dumpling that's heavier on the meat. I like mine that's heavier on the dumplings or some behemoths say the dough boy. Like I want plenty of dough boy inside my, my pea soup and dumplings. Um, and if, and sometimes my mommy, she'll be like, I ain't putting no dumpling in it. I'd be like, well, that ain't no pea soup and dumpling. That's just pea soup and I don't want it. I'm very ungrateful sometimes, y'all. I think y'all should know that. When it comes to my food, I get mad. If you could say you serving steak and eggs and you say, but I, I make no steak. Well, don't call it no steak and eggs. Just say you cook an egg, mommy. Or, so she likes to do that a lot. I think she just does it to annoy me. You could put corn, you could put turkey meat, you could put um, chicken, you put your salt beef, you put your ham, you put your, your peas, I, it, onions, your tomatoes. It, it's just like, it's just perfect. It's just so delicious, it's so hearty. It's perfect on us. We don't have really like cold days in the Bahamas, but like on a rainy day when the temperature drops a little bit, like that is so perfect. It's like the absolute comfort food and I love pea soup and dumplings. So tasty, so, <sighs> it's just home. When I think about the moms, that's what I think about. Now I get nostalgic. Why y'all do this? Oh, y'all didn't do this this week. Anyway, let me go to the last food on the list. Okay, I forgot like the ultimate appetizer when you're going into a Bahamian restaurant and that is conch fritters. We absolutely kill conch fritters. Now, here's the thing with conch fritters. When you go to a spot, you need to make sure that they real conky. And you be like, what's this cow talking about? You gotta make sure the conch fritters are really conky. You gotta make sure they're plenty, plenty conch. Now here's a little tip when you're going into the restaurant. Here's a little tip when you're going into the restaurant. When you order from the server and you say, I wanna order the conch fritters, give me a dozen conch fritters. Turn to them and be like, let me ask you something. These conky? Now here, this is how Bahamians is like. This is how you know Bahamians is like. If the shoulder goes up and their voices go up and like they take in your order and be like, yeah, conky, that is, that is not conky and they lying. So be careful with that. Now, this is how you know when the conch fritter is conky, they saw it. So you ask the, the waiter, let's just say it's a guy. You'd be like, hey but boss, before I get these conch fritters, cause I want to get a dozen of these conch fritters, they conky? <laughs> if you see them like kind of like, yeah, wait, they, they, they saw it, they saw it. They saw it, you like them, you like them, yeah. They did, they dead conky, they dead conky. Like, you see how, how convincing he was? He was like, oh, oh, oh. like, yeah, yeah, they, they dead conky. They saw it, they saw it. Any of those key words, you know, these damn comforters conky. Cause he put, he, he giving you the endorsement, they conky. They dread, they, they, they saw it. Yeah, they, they, you, you would like them, order them. 
Yeah, they conky. Stay away. Just say, let me get something else. Let me get a conk salad because you ain't know what you're talking about. That's my tip of the day. But like I said, they are typically appetizers. And um, again, we have like, we use like a lot of this, the same like ingredients for a lot of our different foods. Like your, your celery, your onions, your little green pepper, you know, and your, 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 either your goat pepper or your bird pepper. And that's mixed in with like flour and um, your conk is like chopped up and, and it's put inside of it and they deep fry it to a golden brown. And so when you pop it open, you can see, you're supposed to see like the fluffy dough, but you're supposed to see like the conk in it as well. They put thyme in it as well. I mean, it's just season it right up. So it got a nice little flavor. You just, you're getting hit with all these different notes, all these different flavors with the conk, with the conk fritters. And then it's served with a dipping sauce. Um, and that's what just set, sets it off too. Like I like, now this is one thing, like when you eat the conk fritter, the fritter itself can be really good. But once you dip it in that nice little dipping sauce, that just sets it off. But I had to, uh, I had to add in the conk fritters because that's one of my favorite appetizers. Like where I just go at the fry. I just go to Drifters. I just go to Drifters a lot. So if y'all in Nassau, um, and y'all go to the fish fry, Arawaki, that's close to downtown. Um, I would say go to Drifters. I like their decor um, and I, I I like their food and I like their comforters. Their comforters is be conky unless they fall off since I've been gone. But I love their comforters. They're dead conky. You're going to love it. So anyway, guys, um, you know, I think it's really important for me on this channel because the name of my channel is This Bahamian Gal and food is such an important part of my life. Um, like I tell you all earlier, I'm real greedy. I love to eat um, and I love Bahamian food and it's, it's unfortunate that it doesn't get the credit it deserves. Um, I remember even just, I live in Washington DC and I have been searching for a Bahamian restaurant and I can't find one. I could always find a, a Jamaican spot and, and, and I end up eating a lot of Jamaican food just to feel like, you know, kind of close to home. Um, there's some similarities, but of course they're, they're very different. Um, but it, I'm used to eating Jamaican food, so I'll eat that. But I really do miss Bahamian food. Like, unless I have the energy to cook it, you know, I want to sometimes just go to a spot and, and just order some Bahamian food. And I have not had that opportunity. Um, and I've been searching in the DMV. So if anybody's from the DMV and they've heard of a Bahamian spot, please drop it down below. I know there are spots in New York and of course in Florida, like we kill it in Florida. But in this area, we don't have one. Ciao. Your girl might have to open up a spot one day. I might have to look into that because um, I do want to expose the world to Bahamian cuisine. It is just so delicious. And I, I feel like if you ate it, you'd be like, damn, I've been missing out big time. I've been missing out. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Um, don't forget to leave comments down below. If you've been to the Bahamas and you tried any of these foods and you liked it, or if you didn't like it, tell me what you didn't like down below. No offense. Everybody's palate is different. Um, and of course, follow me on Instagram at this Bahamian gal, T H I S Bahamian gal, G Y A L. And on Facebook at this Bahamian gal. And you can also follow me on my blog at www.thisbahamiangal.com. Guys, don't forget to leave comments down below. That's really, really important to show that engagement on my channel. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Um, yeah. And I'll see you guys next week, Wednesday at one o'clock Eastern standard time. I love you. You guys are so sweet. Thank you so much for all of my subscribers. And thank you for everybody who is just stumbling across my channel. I hope that um, you enjoy the content um, in the coming weeks, months, and years. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.